John Piper claims to be a seven-point Calvinist. And I'm going to quote from his website what that means. Now, what he's trying to do is be extreme. Oh, you're a Calvinist? I'm a bigger Calvinist than you, right? Oh, you think, oh yeah, no, I'm elect, I think. You know, <laughs> think about how messed up a mentality this is. Here's the quote, the article off his own website. Historically, there are five points of Calvinism, not seven. Right, and what he's saying is he's not seeking to add two more points, but simply calling attention to the belief of the traditional five, total depravity, unconditional election, limited atonement, irresistible grace, and perseverance in the, of the saints, calling attention to those five in a way that also points toward two additional Calvinistic truths that follow from them. Here they are, are you ready? Double predestination and best of all possible worlds. Best hyphen of hyphen all. What in the world does this guy mean by this? Now, the double predestination, I recognize this right away. The sixth point, and this is still off his website, double predestination is simply the flip side of unconditional election. Now listen, if, you, if you're talking to somebody that's a Calvinist, and you bring up the fact that God damned people to hell, in their view, God just said, there's no hope, you can't believe, you can never go to heaven, I made you to burn, they would say, oh, that's hyper-Calvinism. Okay? And it's like, well, if you believe all five points, that's hyper. You know, dispensationalism is screwed up in the same way. But this is what this is teaching. Because Calvinism, their, their point is that God picked you, so the assumption should be God picked you to go to hell. And this is what John Piper is doubling down on. It's double predestination. You were predestined for hell, is what he teaches. He says it's the flip side of unconditional election. Just as God chooses whom he will save without regard to any distinctives in the person, he also decides whom he will not save without regard to any distinctives in the individual. Can you imagine just sitting wondering, I wonder if God made me just to go to hell and I have no hope. What a strange, perverted view of God, right? Calvinism is so wicked. I hate this doctrine probably more than anything else. It's so subtle. They use a lot of scripture. It's very heady and high-minded. The people that are sucked into it, I mean, they're always searching and trying to figure it out. They're trying to balance it out. Well, I'm a, I'm a three and a half. Well, I'm a four point today. Well, I don't know. And they're so confused. And this is the devil's tactic to keep people from true biblical Christianity. Again, off their website, by definition, the decision to elect some individuals to salvation necessarily implies the decision not to save those that were not chosen. God ordains not only that some will be rescued from His judgment, but that others will undergo that judgment. He's saying they're made for hell. What a strange, perverse, wicked doctrine. Unconditional reprobation or double predestination. That's what they call it. In other words, you're made for hell. God chooses to redeem some and leave others. Jesus died for all sins right. of the whole world, for every sin you'll ever commit. Jesus died for the sins of the reprobates. And when they reject God, they reject forgiveness. Forgiveness was offered. It was paid for. And when they say, I don't want it. I don't believe it. I don't want your God. I don't want your law. They give up on it. It's not the other. It's not that God said, "Ah, you're going to hell. You're going to heaven. You're go what that is strange and weird." There's such bad fruit from that. Old Testament, New Testament. It's always been about your choice, what you believe in here, not just how you live. Now, therefore, fear the Lord and serve Him in sincerity and truth, and put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood in Egypt, and serve ye the Lord. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, Choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. In the Old Testament, they were commanded, you make a decision. Don't ride the fence. You have to decide who you'll be. And listen, that's, that's the same way today. Do you want to be a son of God? It's easy. It's simple. The easy way to heaven is to trust on the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You don't have to change anything about your lifestyle. You just have to humble your heart and say, I believe that. That makes sense. Right. Amen. Yeah. 
Calvinism so wicked. In 1 Timothy 2, he says, Who will have all men to be saved and come unto the knowledge of the truth. He says in the same chapter, Who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Right. Not some. Not just the Calvinists. And I mean, literally, since the inception of John Calvin, there have been many people that put their faith in what he wrote more than the Lord Jesus Christ. And John Piper, he, he's like the Pied Piper, right? He is the devil working for this wicked doctrine. He says, the Lord, this is 2 Peter 3, the Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish. You hear that? Any. He doesn't want you to go to hell, but it's your choice. Amen. He's not going to force it on you. He says, but that all should come to repentance. 2 Corinthians 5, we read this this morning, for the love of Christ constraineth us because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. Yeah. I am dead in my sins. I put my faith on the Lord Jesus Christ. He's given me new life, a new man. His Holy Spirit dwells inside of me. I am sealed unto the day of redemption. Amen. My soul and my spirit can never go to hell. Amen. Jesus paid for that. My body will never be perfect. Maybe, maybe the new body one day when I resurrect. Look, the seventh point, here's the weirdest one about John Piper. The seventh point that he teaches, this is off his website, the best of all possible worlds means that God governs the course of history so that in the long run, His glory will be more fully displayed and His people more fully satisfied than would have been the case in any other world. The reality of America today the reality of the homos and the perverts and the pedophiles and the bestiality that's being put in front of everybody, they're saying God chose that. God chose the child molesters to be exalted so that the Calvinists will feel more comfortable with what God has done. They're taking away the free will. They're taking away responsibility. And listen, this goes all the way back to Gnosticism. This goes back to the Babylonian Talmud. This goes back to Egypt. This is wicked, satanic doctrine that teaches do evil so good will abound. That is not what the Bible teaches. That's not what we believe. And it's, it's very weird to say this is the best that God can do. But He wants it to be bad so we appreciate that He's good. And what they're doing is they're accusing God of supporting all this perversion. They're accusing God of making people harm other people. Well, I didn't want to murder. God made me do it. You think about it. People, people blame the devil, right? Well, I didn't want to sin. The devil made me do it, right? Calvinists would say, God made them do it. Wow. What about that child molester? I mean, God made him do it. So we would appreciate our world. Wow. It's wicked as hell. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that you have received, let him be accursed. Anybody that is one of these false prophet Calvinist teachers, the Bible says, let them be accursed. Yeah. Hey, I understand there's the average Joe that's confused by it. Preach the Gospel to them. Get them saved. Show them the love of Christ. Right? Take that ministry of reconciliation upon yourself. But the enemies of God that are working for the devil and preaching Calvinism, I pray that God would smite them. I pray John Piper would die this year. I pray John MacArthur would die this year. And they'll go join John Calvin in hell. Wicked will 